Welcome to the segment of the show we call Hell Bend for Horrible Questions, where I invite guests to come on and talk about their art and answer some horrible, horrible questions. And on Saturday, June 29th, the Egyptian Theater in Los Angeles will host Etheria Film Night. Now, Etheria screens the best new science fiction, fantasy, action, thriller, comedy, and horror films, in other words, genre films, that are directed by women. And leading up to the event, I'll be interviewing some of the filmmakers whose films are up for the audience and jury awards. Today, I'm with writer-director Chelsea Lupkin, and we're going to talk about her short film, Lucy's Tale. Chelsea, thank you for being on Hellbent for Horrible Questions. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So I got to see your film. I thought it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate uh, the kind of work that you put into that and and the storyline. Can you give a brief synopsis of Lucy's Tale? So Lucy's Tale is a body horror, um, and it's essentially about a young girl named Lucy who, as she's coming into her womanhood, also comes into her villainhood. And that's all I'm going to leave you with. (laughs) Excellent, excellent. And I I, I love that you're calling it a villainhood as well. And that you mentioned body horror, because I think what I really liked about the film was that you do what... I, I love to mention horror is very good at doing it. It takes it borrows from German expressionism and brings that internal trauma that people feel and externalizes it. Sometimes it is the setting itself, and sometimes it literally happens to the person's body. And so you do that with puberty as the trauma for this film. But most horror movies, when they deal with puberty, uh, carry it's like telekinesis. And if you're looking at a movie like uh, Ginger Snaps, uh, they're turning into werewolves. But you don't. Have have one single thing. You do this unpredictability kind of like what happens in puberty. It's not one thing. You have a whole bunch of crazy stuff that's popping. And just when you think you've got your hold on one of those things and you're finally getting focused, boom, something else shows up. And it's just that whole idea of how puberty is so overwhelming. So what do you think is the most important thing that you're hoping that audiences come away from Lucy's Tale with? So I think, um, especially bringing forth, uh, female experiences, um, I was really afraid of, you know, just coming into my own when I hit puberty and what better to do (laughs) in horror than to capitalize on what people are already afraid of. So I think the, the biggest thing for me, especially in trying to make sure that I capitalized on that puberty fear, uh, especially for women, uh, correctly on screen was that I really wanted to make sure that A, I had a strong female uh, cast, and B, um, I had another female mind. Um, And so my producer, Sarah Colavano, and I teamed up to really make this as authentic as we possibly could. And she was really, you know, my my right-hand person um, throughout the entire experience. And so when we were really working with these these girls, um, you know, these young women, it just sort of became magic. And it was just this wonderful experience on set to be with so many powerful, talented, and wonderful women. So that was really cool. I think that answers the question. (laughs) So Lucy's Tale is your third short film now? Ooh, I've made a couple. Um, I make a lot of short content in general. Um, I'm a huge fan of short films, but Mm -hmm. this was certainly the one that I felt like really started to represent me for the first time because I had this aha moment of, hey, I should be making things that I really like to watch. And I really Mm -hmm. like scary movies. (laughs) Well, I'm glad to hear that. I I, I was going to say, you've done extensive work. And I know that you've been a cinematographer as well as a writer and a director. uh, And you've worked in television series for like MTV and Elle and also uh, (laughs) delish.com where you're doing uh, shows like uh, Insanely Easy and WTF food uh, and so the reality <laughs> shows that are based on food. But TV has this incredibly interesting pace and you have to constantly move. Uh, what were the most valuable lessons that you learned in TV uh, that worked with you doing independent films, short films? I think that it really comes down to editing, understanding or having perspective going into shooting the project really helped me not overshoot, but know what my edit was going to look like as I was filming it. And for me, you know, because I make a lot of short content in general, I know that pacing is really, really important, especially quick pacing, because, you know, online audiences, 
they're always clicking things. They're always kind of going through right. and, and you really want them to sit down. And it's even hard to get people to sit down in a movie theater and, you know, really be engaged. So I think as I think learning how to be an editor, you know, through my experience, more so than any experience that I've had on set could probably prepare prepared me for it. So you're also a, a senior programmer and editorial writer for uh, Short of the Week, which is an online film site for short films. So you keep seeing people's films and you're making films. And I think when I mentioned the three short films, I had looked on your IMDb and I think it had mentioned Flutter and Uncovering Eden, both of those being dramas. As you keep making films and you're looking at people's shorts of the week, do you find yourself drawn to certain types of stories, themes, or images that invariably is becoming either a style of yours or something that you really want to focus on? Um, you know what? I think it's really great to see what everyone's doing. Um, I, I love short films and I get very excited about storytelling. And I think that they're just these little slices of entertainment that I get to, you know, watch all the time. I see a lot of films. I really do. And it takes a lot to start to analyze what people are doing right, but also what people are doing wrong. And I think through my experience with Short of the Week, it's been this absolute important growing period for me. I'm learning just as much as I'm essentially teaching when I give like feedback or even when I'm reviewing a film that we feature. And it took me a while. I think, you know, as you mentioned, I, I had made these other short films. And of course, they're my babies. All of my work is my babies. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, taking time to really understand the sort of short film formula, of course, there's, there's no right way, but there's certainly wrong ways. Um, I was able to kind of take that information that I was, I was getting from everybody else and right. applying it to my own stuff. And, you know, I... It's sort of just sort of the teacher becoming the student all over again a little bit. And of course, my, you know, the short of the week team, you know, their experience is, you know, insane. Um, I've, I've been with the group for a while, but of course, you know, I got to bow to the rest of them. They're awesome. Everybody, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Lucy's Tale uh, premiered at the Fantasia International Film Festival in, in the Born of Woman program in 2018, right? Yes. And it's been showcased at a whole bunch of, of festivals. It won Best Horror Short at the Winter Film Awards. Now your work's going to be screened at Etheria. As an artist and as a guest, what do you hope to experience at these film festivals? Um, I think it it varies. I think that Fantasia was huge and it was funny, you know, the, the lesson here is to always check your spam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really didn't know that I got in for maybe three weeks. Oh. And of course, you know, I had a very New York moment of, you know, I'm late for a shoot. I'm standing on a New York street corner by myself with like all of this gear with me and there's no one around. And I get this email from, you know, the director of, uh, of, of programming Mitch. Uh, and it's just, Hey, did you get my email? Did you, did you, um, are you coming? Are you coming to Fantasia? <laughs> and I'm like, what? I, was, I didn't get any email. <laughs> and of course, you know, I look and I'm like, Oh my God. You know? So of course that happened. Always check your spam. Yeah. They're like, you know, Chelsea's like, cold as ice, man. She's, <laughs> man. she's some serious pro. <laughs> <She do. laughs> um, no, but that experience was kind of wild to me because Fantasia is, huge. And the Born of Women program, I mean, even at the time, like I didn't really understand what was so awesome about it. And of course, you know, I'm sitting in the back row and there's a million people with notepads, you know, ready to review it and talk about it. And I don't know, I thought that I was going to like lose my fingernails. I was gripping the seat so hard. It was just kind of like, oh, how did I get here? <laughs> um, but then of course, you know, we, I, I think that the biggest thing about these film festivals isn't so much I mean, of course, it's great to see your film on a big screen. There's nothing that can replace that awesome feeling um, or seeing people react to your film. Genre audiences are incredible. Um, but I think that meeting people, FaceTime, getting to know filmmakers, getting to know producers, I mean, that's something that you're not going to get, you know, just putting your film out into the ether online. You you know, being able to go to these film festivals and understanding that there are people like you and there's a market for it is really important. So like even the Chattanooga Film Festival, that was rad. I thought that was going to be my last, you know, theatrical screening. Um, and of course, Etheria happened and I was like, oh, look, 
this is cool. <laughs> so uh, it sounds like you're a fan of genre films and a, a fan of horror films. What's your first kiss with horror? The movie that made you fall in love with the genre, if you did. Sometimes you're just oh. trying them out. Like my first movie that I saw that I was like, wow, I need to be making these. Yeah. Kind of thing. Jaws. Totally Jaws. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was terrified. Um, and, you know, my parents must have got a kick out of the fact that they showed it to me. And I'm like a nine year old who discovered it at a beach house. I mean, ruined <laughs> the vacation. <laughs> um, but I really loved it because it's one of those movies that even if you strip the, the supernatural element of it, mm -hmm. you get this really great character story. Like, it's not really about the shark. And I think that those movies are stronger than just, you know, the jump out of the woods kind of scare. I really like human stories and I really like turning them into horror movies. So yeah. Jaws for sure. That's a fantastic one. A sense of dread that's in Jaws is uh, palpable. Uh, you can't get much more primal and simple of an idea. And I think simple and primal works so well. And everything that you say about character, definitely. I saw it. I'm an old guy. So I saw it in the theater as a young, young, young man. Yes. And uh, <laughs> boy, not knowing anything about that movie and going in, the only thing that I heard was somebody grabbed me while they were coming out and they knew me. And they said, Bradley, you watch out. When there's a tooth that's on the side of this hole in the ship, you be careful about that. And I'm like, oh my God, what's this thing? What is going to happen? I'm and so, so when sorry. it did happen, yeah, I just kind of jumped. My friend's glasses flew off. It was just, it, it was just wonderful. I, I used to live back east, and I remember going to Wildwood, New Jersey, the year of Jaws, and just watching like two people in the water yeah, no. and everybody else just no. up on the sand. Nobody was going in. So, when you hear the word horror, what do you associate with it? What does what comes to your mind? Um, emotions. I think it's one of the few genres that can kind of spark a number of reactions. I'm one of those people that religiously go to even haunted houses, and I think what I that captures is the same thing that horror movies capture, which are people who are laughing, people who are crying, people who are screaming. You know, it's just this kind of like huge human crisis <laughs> moment. And, and I'm one, that's what I kind of love about watching, you know, watching horror, making horror is that I want to capture that in a bottle. So we've been talking horror now. I want to talk about guilty pleasures right now. The movie <laughs> that you love that is so not like what you usually watch. What's your guilty pleasure? Wow. Oh, uh, I mean, for whatever reason, maybe it was just because it came to mind in a conversation earlier this week, but I love Twister. <laughs> <laughs> That's I great. Don't, I don't know what that says about me, but that is an awesome movie. Um, <laughs> Well, it's just, again, with these characters, yeah, that's a, that is, you know, the twister is not that impressive, but you know, the cast and God, everybody was in that, weren't they? Yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think that's got to be my guilty pleasure just because sometimes you just got to like go back to some basics. Cow, same cow. That's what I want. <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. I, I can relate completely because I am a firm believer in the greatness of the towering inferno, <laughs> the <old laughs> yeah. giant building on fire. I still will watch that. I, I can talk erudite about all sorts of films and talk about horror in such a way. But if that's on, forget it. <laughs> yeah, I just want to watch the flames. <laughs> so it's, it's a ton of fun. Well, there you go. Uh, believe it or not, you made it. You made it through all the horrible questions. So I want to thank you so much for being on. Can you tell people where they can see Lucy's Tale or where they can go to keep up with your work? So you'll be able to see Lucy's Tale very, very soon on Gunpowder and Sky's YouTube channel, Alter, and also on their site. Very excited to be a part of their family, um, or their horror family, that is. And you can check out more of my work at ChelseaLupkin.com. Fantastic. And uh, we've been talking with writer, director Chelsea Lupkin, and her film is Lucy's Tale. You'll be able to see that relatively soon. And I want to thank you again for being on, Chelsea. And thanks, everyone, for listening. And until next time, stay hell-bent.